Here's another example of how to just identify the limiting reactant. But I've stepped up this problem a few notches by not even giving you a balanced equation. So before we even begin, we have to write an equation and we have to balance it. So um, in this problem we have, um, it reads, if 1.75 moles of phosphoric acid reacts with 5.00 moles of sodium hydroxide to form sodium phosphate in water, what is the limiting reactant? So the first thing we're going to do is kind of ignore the numbers and just write out a skeletal equation. We start off with phosphoric acid, which I hope you remember is hydrogen phosphate. Same formula as hydrogen phosphate. So we know that hydrogen has a plus one charge. Phosphate from the back of your periodic table has a three minus charge. And hydrogen phosphate has a formula of H3PO4. This is also one of the acids I asked you to memorize um, in the naming and formulas unit. And also you can remember if you ate something icky, you might get the itis. Ate and ick. Phosphate forms phosphoric acid. That's another way you can come up with a proper formula. Um, again, ignoring the words. Phosphoric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, which means phosphoric acid is being added or reacts with sodium hydroxide. To write the proper formula for sodium hydroxide, remember that sodium is a plus one charge. Hydroxide is a negative one charge and these charges actually cancel each other out to form NaOH. I'm going to continue on with the equation to form sodium phosphate. So there's the to form, and sodium phosphate is also an ionic compound. Ionic compounds start with a metal, and we have the ions of Na+, and PO4 3 minus. When we crisscross the positions of just the charges, the negative one uh, understood one stays an understood one. The three is going to move as a subscript of Na, and we end up with Na3PO4. And finally, we have and water. Here is the skeletal equation, meaning this is not the balanced equation. Now, to balance the equation, I'm going to use a longer method just because it's more visual. And um, I'm going to start off by balancing the easiest element that I see. I'm not going to start off with elements that show up in more than one equation like hydrogen or oxygen. I'm going to save those for the end because hydrogen is all over the place which can be confusing. Oxygen is all over the place which can be confusing. So let's start off with phosphorus. One phosphorus on the reactant side, one phosphorus on the product side. That's all good so let's move on to the next easy element, sodium. There's one Na on the left side of the arrow and there are three Na's on the right side of the arrow so I'm going to add two compounds that include the Na for a total of one, two, three Na's on the left side and I have three Na's on the right side. Now I'm going to focus on um, hydrogen. I choose hydrogen over oxygen because oxygen is in both compounds here and both compounds here. Hydrogen looks easier to deal with. There are a total of three four, five, six hydrogens on the reactant side. There's a total of two hydrogens on the product side, and I need a total of six. So there's two, there's four, there are six hydrogen now on the product side. Now to count up the oxygens. There are four oxygens, five, six, seven total oxygens on the reactant side, four, five, six, seven total oxygens on the product side, so this is now balanced, but let's go ahead and include our coefficients of 1, 3, 1, 3. Here's our balanced equation. Now we can identify the limiting reactant. Okay, so we have 1.75 moles of phosphoric acid being reacted with 5 moles of NaOH. Now, um, I am just going to choose one of these values, doesn't matter which one. I always like to start off with the first one. What we're trying to decide is we're trying to figure out how many moles of NaOH is needed if we have 1.75 moles of phosphoric acid. We have 1.75 moles available and we want to calculate how many moles of NaOH are needed. So we start off with the amount of phosphoric acid, 1.75 moles. 
Then we can do a mole to mole ratio from a balanced equation between the phosphoric acid and the sodium hydroxide. So for every one mole of phosphoric acid, there are three moles of sodium hydroxide. We can do our calculation of 1.75 times 3 to get 5.25 moles of NaOH. This number represents how much NaOH is needed if you have 1.75 moles of H3PO4. So now we compare this amount that we need to the amount that's actually available. According to the problem, we have 5 moles available. So think, do we have enough NaOH? We need 5.25 and 5 moles is available. We do not have enough NaOH, therefore sodium hydroxide is the limiting reactant. This tells us that sodium hydroxide is going to run out faster than phosphoric acid in the reaction. When we finish off this reaction, there will be leftover phosphoric acid as soon as we, um, sodium hyphosphate and water is created. And that's it.